Welcome back to part three of this tutorial on QLab. The hard stuff is done. In this part, we are mainly gonna focus on some best practices. The first thing I wanna talk about is custom settings. In part two, we talked about adjusting settings for visual cues, but there are certain settings I always use just because I think they're helpful. So let's open up a new workspace and click this gear in the bottom right to see our settings. And uh, here we see our settings. Uh, something I always uncheck is auto number new queues. It can get really annoying when you're setting up your project and QLab keeps trying to give every queue a number, then you reorganize them and Q3 is before Q2 and it's just annoying. So uh, I'd leave that off. Uh, you can always add queue numbers when your project is finished. I also enable auto load for new queues. Auto load ensures that the next queue is always loaded up and ready to go just in case your machine uh, isn't uh, the fastest. Uh, you can also enable auto load for individual queues in the inspector window. Something else you can utilize is queue templates. Queue templates can make it so when you add a certain type of queue, it will always have a certain setting. For example, if I go to fade uh, inside queue templates, I can set it to be a fade and stop with a two second duration. And now every new fade queue will already start that way. It will already be a fade and stop. But an important thing to know is that workspace settings are specific to that workspace. If I open up a new workspace right now, the settings I just changed won't be there. That's unless I save this current workspace as a template. So if I go to File, Save as Template, I can save this project as a template. So I can create new projects from this same starting place. All right, now let's talk about organization. The whole idea of building a QLab is to remove room for error from your show. You can make it as easy as possible for the person running your show to do it with no mistakes. So you don't wanna bring in a QLab that is super disorganized and hard to understand. So I'm gonna open up an example of a bad QLab here. I made this earlier. So immediately you can see it looks uh, like it looks like a mess. The file names are long and not descriptive. Nothing is color coded. Some of these queue numbers have weird decimals in them. And uh, if you hand this to your tech, you're just asking for a bad show. So I'm gonna to switch to a good example in a second, but one thing we can fix immediately here is the queue numbering. If all the queues in your show are in the order you want them in, all you have to do to renumber them is select all and hit command R. You can tell it to start at one and increment by one. And now we have fixed our numbering. You can also change queue numbers manually on each queue just by double clicking in the queue number column. We can also fix these queue names. All you need to do to rename a queue is double click on the name and type in something else. You want something that's short and descriptive. The first queue is just a black slide, so I'll double click on that and call it black slide. And another thing that can be hugely helpful is color coding. To color code a queue, just go to basics, uh, the basics tab in the inspector and pick a color. Now that queue stands out a little better. Uh, personally, I think it's really helpful to color code by sketch or by scene. Now uh, let's look at a good example. I'm gonna close out of that, open up this new example, and that is much better. As you can see, all the queues in an individual sketch are one color, with transition queues being no color. You don't have to make your, uh, your shows that way, but that is what works best for me. Our queue numbers are all whole numbers. Queue names are descriptive and not too long. And one other thing you'll notice is that when we're using follow queues and multiple queues happen together or lead into one another, we've made those group queues. For example, intro video plus interstitial is actually two cues. If you look at this uh, drop down here, uh, the interstitial is playing after the intro video. But since that happens automatically and the person running the show doesn't need to make that happen, uh, they are just combined into one cue since they're just hitting go once. Uh, so it's one cue number eight. Now that leads us right into tech scripts. I actually have the tech script for this show because this was a real show, uh, the last sketch show I did before the pandemic. 
Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, you'll notice that the text script is very clear about what queue needs to happen when, and the queue names and numbers all match the queue lab. Q3 fades and stops the interstitial video, and that happens on Lights Up, which happens when there is one actor on stage. Q4 happens after Xander says, yes, me. Q5 stops the music, which happens when Xander freezes. The tech person running this show actually didn't have an in-depth understanding of QLab, and he didn't need to. Our script and QLab were organized, and so he ran our show perfectly. All he needed to do was hit spacebar at the right times, and the tech script told him when to hit it. If you have an organized QLab and tech script, it really just makes life easier on everyone. All right, that is it for part three. In part four, I will talk about taking your QLab workspace to the theater. Before I go, I will leave you with an example of a properly formatted QLab and tech script set to a Rowan Atkinson bit. At the center of the Elizabethan world sits the king. Upon the character of the king depends the plot, and so there are many different kinds of king. The benign king, benign king with a physical defect. <laughs> the mad king. The evil king. The evil king hatching a plot. The mad king hatching an egg.